I'm a huge Fallout fan. And I'm not. So is the show really worth your time? Nerd beating the nerd. I think it goes without saying that as a Fallout fan, I was going to love this show regardless. But the main question that I have today is if Seth, a newcomer to this genre and property, is actually a fan of something that I hold extremely dear in my heart. So Seth, I want to hear your thoughts. What did you think of the show? Don't hold back. I really enjoyed it. All that being said, I do feel like there's things that I'm missing because I never played the game. Oh yeah, dude, I fully intend to go into a little list of my favorite Easter eggs but what are things that you liked and didn't like? So I love the whole like futuristic 50s vibe. It's the future, but it's really like a throwback to simpler times, if you will. The soundtrack is amazing. The doo-wop and like the old rock and roll and like, you know, Bing Crosby and stuff like that. I like kind of how whimsical it is. On one hand, it's a very serious subject. You know, the end of the world, this pending doom of nuclear fallout. But then they throw in little funnies and then, you know, the vault dwellers are very naive. There's some humor involved. And then I like the mutant aspect of it. Giant bugs and creatures and things like that from like what we all imagine would happen if there was this post-nuclear world. I really enjoyed it. I think the story so far is fantastic. Yeah, I, I feel like I just know too much knowing that this is from a video game. And so I'm like, okay, what things are lost on me? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I fully I, respect that. I think there is an element of FOMO. Like there's a lot of very specific things that happen in this show that is completely lost on a newcomer. But I think that they've done an amazing job of not only creating a real tangible world with actual set pieces and giving you this sort of hybrid Westworld, little bit of a cyberpunky, also that throwbackness that you were talking about. It's a really beautiful balance to everything that's, I guess, nostalgic that we crave. And that is why the games have been so successful. It's this parallel universe where it's pretty close to ours, but also far enough off that we hope that that's not our inevitable future. One thing that I really appreciated, and this is featured in the first episode, but it's really cool to see actual vault life and vault existence. I love playing the Fallout Shelter game that's on your phone and you play it on consoles and stuff like that too. So what do you think of vault life? Is this something that you would be down for? Because there's definitely a mention of cousin stuff and that kind of like, weirded me out a little bit. <laughs> so I want to hear your thoughts on the, uh, you know, shelter life. Yeah, they were super casual about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, they mentioned it at one point. They're like, vault dwellers are so fortunate or whatever. And I feel like on the one hand, they are because they're very sheltered and they have, like, you know, the projector that shows the farmland and all that stuff and, you know, it kind of gives the appearance of the outside world. But I have to believe, and all I could think about that whole time was, like, how bored I would be inside this giant shelter. And I know that they have jobs and they have meaning and things like that, but I, I don't know. I, just, I might get bored playing games on my Pip-Boy. Okay. <laughs> so that the game that he's playing on his Pip-Boy, there's an app that you can download that like kind of generates a Pip-Boy experience and that was on there. Seeing him play that, oh, it made me so happy because that's a game you can play actually on your Pip-Boy. It's the one of the fun little Easter eggs, I guess, that's a part of the series. And plus it also takes me back to the time of the fat brick Nokia phones and the only oh, yeah. thing that you could play was Snake. <laughs> Oh, and dude, you just, got so good at Snake, too. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, just hours of that because you were bored and that's all there was. So huge respect for that addition. Okay, man, I'm about to bust. Like, I just want to talk about everything that I absolutely love about this show. So sorry, but here we go. Right off the bat, like I said, everything in the vault itself, the life itself, so freaking cool. They have the crops in there and then that projector that shows them, like, you know, fields in Nebraska. Absolutely beautiful and amazing idea, by the way. Plus, everyone Everyone's in their vault suits. Everyone's looking great. Like just the feeling of that community that they have, but yeah. also it's some sort of, I don't know, they're like weird and like culty. And like I said, the cousin stuff is odd, but Super I guess- Super homeschooly. One, yes, dude, 100%, yeah. super homeschooly. One of the things that I appreciate the most is all of the little sound effects. So there's a moment where he's trying to open the gate. The one cousin who clearly has a thing for Lucy is stalling and he like flips a switch and the, the light Light illuminates and it goes boom. That is the sound of your light turning on in the game on your Pip Boy. I love that. All, again, dude, there's tons of little things that you're seeing. The stim packs that they use. It's the perfect sound effect. It's beautiful, dude. I 
absolutely love all of those little nuggets, all of the Vault Boy stuff across the vault, the guns that they have, the outfits that they're wearing. When Lucy leaves the vault and goes into the town of Philly, it feels like Diamond City. It feels like these ramshackled towns that are just slapped together from debris and rust and dirt and poop. Like, it's so amazing, <laughs> man. And Dude, it gave, uh, me a, it gave me like a water world vibe. You know what I mean? Like, yes. That is yes. what that reminded me of when she got into the town. It was like instantly water world. And I just want to like circle back to the Pip-Boy really quick. Full confession here. I definitely got on eBay to see what it would cost to get a Pip-Boy. But then I instantly had like imposter syndrome because I'm like, dude, you've never even played the game. You've watched like two episodes of this show. You're you're bought in on the hype. Like you're what are you just going to like start buying Nuka Colas and like a Pip-Boy and like become like this mega Fallout fan? Maybe. Maybe yes. I will, but I feel like I got to play the games first before I can like justify that purchase. If you go on to IGN.com, you can buy a Pit Boy. You can still get some of the new Coca-Colas. You can still get some of the beverages. It is a great time for Fallout fans, but a horrible time for Fallout fans. I've spent far too much money on merch that's just Fallout branded because I'm a sucker and I make very poor decisions. Let me ask you this. And I know like we're maybe I'm getting ahead of our schedule here, but it, it doesn't really matter. I think like we could sit here and talk about about this. I, as a person that's never played the games, really enjoyed it. Again, it's not that I was confused. It's just that I have questions or sure. I'm just curious about the game more so. I think that it is a, a great story, even for people who are never going to play the game. It should definitely be watched. But I do have some questions. So this maybe this is like part of the Easter eggs or whatever. Okay. But I never realized I had seen some stuff on YouTube and some other like maybe like TikTok or something where people hoard all of these Nuka Cola bottle caps. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that they used that as like a currency yeah but why like why did that become a currency of choice in this world kind of long story short from a history perspective but essentially nuka cola became this massive brand and it kind of like took that world by storm and so there was a lot of like readily available metal caps when the fallout happened and so you know with pre-war money it was paper so it was like you know it could be destroyed it could be ruined. So when people are looking for currency, obviously you want something that's going to be easily identifiable. And so that's why they went with caps. And I mean, if you think about it, there's still bottle caps now from, you know, sodas and beers from, you know, 50 years ago that people are still hanging on to. And so if you need a currency that's going to hold up to the test of time, Nuka Cola, baby. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, it was just interesting. They started like referencing caps. I was just like, yeah. are they talking about bottle caps? And I only know about that because I, there's just been a lot of hype around the show coming out and the game and stuff like that and seeing these Nuka Cola caps. That's really funny. Okay, so what are some other obvious Fallout fan Easter eggs? Okay, well, <laughs> I have to tell you, there's one moment when they're sort of introducing the ghoul. It's the three guys, you know, sort of standing there right before the ghoul is revealed. And there's one guy who's holding a weapon and it's called the junk jet and it's actually also featured in the um the general store later it's kind of hanging on the wall and you can see it it says junk jet and i forget how much it was but 200 and some odd caps so that's something that i found in one of my playthroughs and it's a, kind of a part of the brotherhood of steel quest line you go down uh to this sort of basement area and essentially what it is it's this giant gun that you just put random trash into and then fire it at enemies so you're shooting hubcaps and baby limbs, I mean, uh, baby doll limbs, not actual baby limbs. And, you know, anything that you have, like any junk that you pick up in the wasteland, which I love the fact that in Philly, there's so many people that just have, they're just covered in junk. They look like the witches from Labyrinth when they're all just like putting stuff on Jennifer Connelly's character. Like, that's what the fallout is. And you save as much as you can. You don't know what it's going to be worth. Dude, those witches in the labyrinth weird me out so bad. The thing of my nightmares are those weird ladies. Yeah. Side note. So a lot of the weapons are just really cool. I thought the ghoul, his tiny little little nuke missiles that he shoots out of his, uh, you know, revolver, if you will. Yeah. Um, really cool touch. They make that kind of thunk sound. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, the clothing options for everyone, spot on. I mean, as, as you just see other people wandering around, it's like, is that what we're gonna look like after an apocalypse? Or is it gonna be just like weird ripped graphic tees and, you know, ball caps that are, you know, shredded? And are we gonna be walking around in Yeezy slides and Crocs? I mean, is this gonna be like idiocracy in the future? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent here, but there's some great casting. Lucy's dad is the guy who played in the original Dune movie. I forget his name, it escapes me, but I instantly recognized him. And then of course, like who could forget Michael Rappaport is the <laughs> the knight. And and of course, dude, Michael Rappaport <laughs> is like, he just dies instantly. He is like a brief cameo basically. And it's like, all I can think about with that dude is does he love that that happened? Or is he just like hard up for roles? And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Screw it. I guess I'll be in this Fallout show. I mean, I ain't got nothing else going on, you know, because he's like a C-list actor at this point. You know what I mean? This is probably like a big deal for him, but he's instantly just, he's just boned instantly. Well, he's actually in uh, Only Murders in the Building, which I actually, I really liked his character in it. I mean, you, you hate him. I mean, a lot of the stuff that he does, he's kind of a jerk, but it is that love-hate relationship. Like, you appreciate what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, and I feel the same way in this show. I, again, he's a jerk, but you appreciate the presence of him in the show. So yeah. Michael Rappaport, thank you for being a jerk. Yeah, I'm sorry for the mean comments, but it's the internet. <laughs> okay, speaking of mean comments and the internet, I, okay. I wanna bring us home here with this. I understand that there's gonna be folks out there that don't like this show for whatever reason. It could be because you yourself just hate things. We learned from Michael Caine that some people just won't watch the world burn. And if that's you, please do me a favor and just shut up, okay? The internet does not need any more negativity. We live in a world where every day something horrible happens and you do not need to contribute to that negativity, okay? Amazon, the titan of ruining people's lives has actually done something beautiful here. They have made a show. They have taken a video game and turned it into an amazing piece of cinema, if you will. I know it's a TV show, but this is the best video game to live action adaptation that we have ever seen. The Last of Us was amazing. I think this takes it to that next level, that next step. And maybe this is the start of video game projects that are gonna be absolutely amazing. And then maybe we could take a break from all these superhero movies because everyone is just really getting tired with that stuff. So honestly, please don't be an asshole on the internet, okay? Well, with all that being said, thanks so much for watching. And from all of us here at Nerd Leading the Nerd, come back soon. Cause we'll be waiting. Nerd leading the nerd. We love to talk about all things nerdy. Nerd leading the nerd. Like TV, video games, and movies. Nerd leading the nerd. RPGs and board games also. Nerd leading the nerd. Set them true while you're friendly tour guides. Nerd leading the nerd. So sit back and relax and enjoy the ride with. Nerd leading the nerd.